dump pick mower. Will it run? Hello, and thank you for stopping by. Today I have this Craftsman Platinum 190cc lawn mower, and it's a dump pick. I picked this up, and it's been sitting for a year in my boneyard. And the reason it's been sitting, when I first picked it up, it looked like it was in decent shape. All the parts were here. But when I got it home and pulled on the cord, it wouldn't turn over. So it's been sitting all this time, and I figure I keep it for parts. Like I said, everything was here. I pulled it out. I'm trying to clean up the boneyard a little. And I noticed the reason it wouldn't pull over is that the cable was broken at the connection. Now, I haven't seen this one before. Normally, it's just one cable here. But this one here, if you can see, should be attached to this loop. And it's separated. So this is an easy fix. What I did do was to clamp it down on this end and the blade turned freely. So I'm going to show you the process or how I go about working on these discarded mowers to see if I can get them to work and put them back into use. First thing I'm going to do is to get all this debris off it. I'm going to wash this all down. Makes it easier to work on. And once I have it cleaned up, we'll start to work on it. A few days have passed since I cleaned this up. I wasn't feeling well and i'm just back on this now i believe this is where we left off today i'm going to show you a different way that i'm going about to see whether this is going to run or not so first thing is to make sure there's oil there's oil in there i put a little bit of gas in there i might need a little bit more i'm going to take this cover off there's two screws one here one here they require a phillips head screwdriver and this piece right here has to come off i've already removed the screws to move this along Next, I'm going to take this recoil off. To take the recoil off, I have to remove these bolts that are in here. And there's one, two, three of them. And they require a 516 socket. And then, once this is off, I'm going to remove the cowling. So let me get that off, and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. The magnet helps a lot. Now that I have the gas tank removed, I'm going to remove this engine cowling, and this requires a 3 8 socket, and you have a bolt here, a bolt here. Oh, I'm going to have to remove this dipstick back to the smaller socket, and we have two bolts back there, one under the spider web. All right, let me get these off, and I'll be back. Now I have the bill wired up over here to open position the brake isn't on and the kill switch isn't making connection and the reason for that if you recall in the first part of the video i showed where this part is broken so by pulling this back i'm going to do anything to release the brake and the kill wire on here this is something that i'm doing i do not recommend this this could be very dangerous so it's not to be tried at home that said let's get going Nothing. Pull this air filter out. I'm going to spray a little carb cleaner in here and see if I get a little kick. I'm using this gum out jet spray. Um, when using this, you don't want to use much of this. If you get it running with it, just stop because you, you're not lubricating anything in the engine. This is to clean it out. So it's not the best to be running off of. This is just to see if we're going to get a little bump out of this.
saw that it fired up. So that's telling me we have spark, we have compression. What we don't have is fuel going into the engine. I'm gonna pull this carburetor off and see what that looks like. If you're doing a carb clean out or a carb repair, take a picture of where the springs are located. So when you take this apart, you don't get back to it the same day, you know exactly where they go. It's not much to it, but if you have them on the wrong way, it's not gonna work. This spring over here, see how this is connected? This loop to the back and this spring part to the front. It's connected to this tab here, and to the tab here, all right? Now to get the carb off, we have to remove this air filter housing. And this just has three screws. Behind here, there's a gasket. If you're careful, you should be able to use that gasket again, unless it's already torn. That torn gasket, the missing gasket, cause it not to run right or not to start. Depending how bad it is. It'll be sucking in too much air. All right, so this is coming off. There's a hose in the back that's holding it on. This hose goes to here. Here's the gasket I was talking about. Now, I have to remove the fuel line and behind here, let's see if I can show it to you. I'm not sure if this is showing up. Back here, there's a bolt back here and a bolt back here that's holding this carburetor on. Putting the camera down, it's hard for me to hold this camera and work on this at the same time. I'm gonna pull this carburetor off, take it to the bench, clean it up, and see what we're looking at. All right, I'm at the table and out of the sun, and this is what this carb looks like on the outside. So before I crack it open, I'm gonna clean all this off. As I mentioned in other videos that I do this on, you want to clean this off. No point in opening this up to clean it out and having all this debris falling in. And it doesn't hurt to work on something clean. It makes it a lot, for me, it makes it a lot easier working on it when it's clean. And that's what I saved this old gas for. When I pull gas out of a mower that's stale, put it in a container, and I generally use it for this, then I use the car cleaner to clean the inside of it out. So I'm recycling and repurposing on this end. That's part of our theme. Trying to position this camera where I'm not going to get any of this splashing back on the camera. Okay, let's see what we have. If you happen to be doing this, you want to be real careful. It's gas, very flammable. Just to give you an idea what this is, you can see the water that was in this gas, besides the debris. Yep. There we go. This cleans up real easy. Toothbrush, a little bit of gas, five, ten minutes, have it looking almost like new. When I have this cleaned up, I'll be back. All right, I have this cleaned off reasonably well. And before I open it up, I just want to point out, these are the spots where it'll be clogged. You have this opening here, you have this over here, down in here on this side you have the camera's probably not picking it up some idle ports right in here there's usually three little holes right in here and they get clogged to get this bowl off you'll need a half inch either offset wrench or you could use a socket either way you can see how this is recessed so the regular wrench is a little tough getting it in there Lay it flat. Sometimes they're a little tough to get off, depending on how that gas situation is in there. Let's see, oh, this came off real easy. No problem. Okay, I don't expect to see too much in there that's bad. Let's see what we have. Wouldn't hurt to wear a pair of gloves while you're doing this either. When you're putting this back together, don't forget this washer over here. You'll have a leak if you don't put it back on. First thing we'll do, just look at this. This is your main, look at this. Look how clogged this is. This is why it's not running. Right here, there's an opening. Some of these have an opening right in the thread on top. I don't see it on this one. But this is definitely clogged. Let's clean this out. We'll start with this. Okay. 
see how that wire is going through that was all clogged with debris see through it now there we go see my thing right here see the opening okay so now we can see through that Holding it out in here I'm gonna hit it with some carb spray but I'm doing this off camera not to get it onto the lens we have to finish cleaning this up uh, let's see what surprise we have in here now uh, look at this see all that rust in there or whatever that is that's what was clogging it up and keeping it from running the bowl itself isn't dead actually the bowl is pretty good this is just general maintenance if you take care of these units you don't have this problem people just let them go look at all this caked up over here you don't necessarily have to pull the carb off every year but as a rule of thumb at the end of the season I let them run until it runs dry I guess okay. Here's your float and your needle this needle is a metal tip and this looks like it's fine doesn't look like there's any problem there now inside we do have a rubber seat sometimes these seats will swell and it won't let the gas go through there's an emulsion tube in here let me see if we can press that out No, that's not budging. See this tube in here? That this brass tube. Let me pull it. At the end of the screwdriver, there's a brass tube. That tube comes up from here, and the way it works is this jet let gas go in through here. It gets sucked up into that tube and into the carb and into the engine. So from here to there and in. So if this is clogged or this is clogged. It's not going to run or if it's clogged slightly or run poorly you'll hesitate you get that surging and also these over here have to be cleaned so the best thing if you have an ultrasound cleaner i bought one a couple of months back and then i haven't used it yet but if you have an ultrasound cleaner it'd be good to drop it in there if you don't i've had carbs that were completely corroded that i just uh, got a pot put some dawn in there and I boiled it outside. I used some sticks, coal, whatever I had to get a fire going. And I boiled them for a while. And that cleaned out some bad carbs I had. These were carbs that were hard to replace. Um, couldn't get the OEMs and the aftermarkets just weren't working on them. Okay, so I'm going to spray this all out. I'm going to clean all this up over here with a brass brush. Going to put this all back together. I forget this has to be cleaned. Once I have this all together, I'm going to bring it back. To the engine put it on and see if we get it to run now if you don't want to go through all of this down below i have a link to a company called hipaa h-i-p-a so far they had every carburetor that i was looking for there are times when these carburetors are so bad that even though i get them running if it's not for me i don't want to take the chance that i put this on and i might have missed a little debris somewhere and it's running fine now and a couple of days later that debris moves along and then starts clogging it again and if you like to get a carburetor for your unit whether it's this carburetor or another unit go to that link down below HIPAA actually sent me a carburetor to try so I'm gonna clean this up and try the carburetor that they sent and see how that works and if that doesn't work right we'll put this one back on and see if there's a difference let me clean this up and get it all together and we'll take it from there Let's check out this carburetor that HIPAA sent me and see how it compares to the original. Alright, so they send the carburetor. And a couple of the goodies in here also let's see let's look at them side by side all right
they line up the mounting brackets line up this end over here it looks the same the top now I bought carburetors before from Amazon where the tops didn't line up and I had to do a little uh, fabrication this looks like it'll line up just fine okay everything looks good on this so we're gonna try this see if we get that engine to run see what else we have with this we have the gaskets one gasket that goes on here the o-ring that goes on this side so a new o-ring new gasket that's good we have a primer bulb this particular engine doesn't require a primer bulb but some of these carburetors will fit several different engines we have a air filter and a pre-air filter this alone got to be close to 10 to 15 dollars if you were to go into home depot and pick this up all right i'm going to go over to the mower mount this onto the engine and we'll see if we get it to run this being a review of this carburetor i have to point this out when i went to mount this onto the engine this hole is a little tight for the linkage to go through it looks almost identical but you can see here that this drill bit fits in on the old carburetor the new carburetor it doesn't make it so it's not a big deal just um, holding on to this drill bit with a pair of vice grips and we're just going to open this up a little not by much it's just that little bit the old one does have a snug fit so this one the little plastic the mold when it came out of the mold so really not even worth mentioning but i'm just pointing it out so if you should buy this carburetor and you have the same issue that's all it takes to remedy this all right all set this time i have the spark plug connected i have oil i have gas i use two cups of gas in there and I have a pair of pliers to remove the spark plug wire to shut it off because we have it tied up here. Now I didn't put this all together because there's other work that has to be done on this. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this engine. We have a loose wheel over here. There's a lot of other issues with this which would be another video. But for now, let's see if we can get this engine started and how that carburetor from HIPAA works. Back to the drill. Now let's see what we have underneath Okay, the carburetor is a definite go now a couple of things it wasn't a carburetor issue this choke the throttle wasn't being kept open the problem that you saw wasn't from the carburetor it was because this wasn't completely put back together when you have the cowling or the cover over this as the flywheel turns these fins are blowing the air against this and it's opening this up to open the throttle now there's a spring missing here that I have to get that goes from this point to this point to close the choke so when you go to start it the choke is closed when it's spinning it'll open this up and not only that there's an automatic choke over here that'll keep this open in addition to that I didn't keep it running for any length of time because the air that circulates up here is the air that cools off the engine head and, and revving it up at high RPMs without the air circulating over the fins 
you can end up warping the head or blowing the uh, head gasket. That's a wrap. The zipper carburetor works. The only issue I had was that hole, the plastic just had to be just tweaked ever so slightly to get that piece in. Everything else fit. The gaskets were the right size, the carburetor's the right size. It's a go. So if you need any parts, you don't have to have this engine, but they have carburetors for all different size engines. Go to that link, and it is an affiliated link, which means if you go through my link, HIPAA does give me a commission on the carburetors that you buy through there. Just wanted to disclose that. So that's a wrap for now. If you enjoyed this video or have any questions, let me know. Post them down below. Give it a like. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Hit that Joe Z button. And not to miss my new videos as I upload them, be sure to ring the bell. Until next time, stay safe.